Hey, what's going on, movie lovers? I'm Jeff. I am Kyle. And we are Shut Up, I Like This, podcast where we talk about how much we like film and we don't hate movies. Yeah, right? Fuck Rotten Tomatoes. That's our next t-shirt design. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that would be a good one, too. I think so. I think a lot of people would buy that. Uh, I, you sent me that tweet about how Rotten Tomatoes thought John Carpenter was dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he replied back like, hey, I'm still alive. Yep. Uh, That's Rotten Tomatoes for you. Yeah, really? They, yeah, they know their stuff. <laughs> um, so this is episode 63 of Shut Up, I Like This. Um, talking about Dick Tracy. From you betcha. 1990. This is one of my picks. I wanted to... I wanted to talk about this movie. Fuck yeah. yeah. And it's I, I like um, how we can each throw out movies, and as soon as we say it, we're like, Oh yeah, that'd be yes, great. Yes! That we we got to do that one. Um, and as soon as you said Dick Tracy, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember having this on VHS. Oh, sure. Uh, I liked the the slip cover that it had. I thought it was really cool. Uh, the, the, uh, it was like a circle outline with Dick Tracy and the kid running, but it was like cartoony. It was just a cool image. Yeah. And uh, I like the font that Dick Tracy's on in. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just, I remember having the VHS and that slipcover was awesome. And I remember watching this quite a bit. Uh, this was one of those movies for me too that I just remember watching as a kid a lot and really liking it. Like I'm, I'm talking like early 90s when I was a little kid. Yeah. It was like Dick Tracy and the live action Ninja Turtles movie. Yes. Tim Burton's Batman. Like, those were the ones that I remember watching just, like, all of the time. Uh, there was the toy line. Do you remember the Dick Tracy toy line? Vaguely. From the early 90s? I, I kind of remember the game a little bit. More. Uh, the Nintendo? The uh, original Nintendo yeah. one? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. I remember always being really confused because it was kind of... It, like, I, I yeah, want to call fine. it I want to call it open world. At least it felt open it world. It was, like, the first incarnation of LA, of L.A. Noir. Yeah, because like remember, a, like it would be platformer, but uh-huh. then you could go. It had the t- like it had the, it had the top down where you would get in the car. It was like GTA. Yeah, and you could drive around, and I remember being just like over my head as a kid <laughs> yeah. of like I don't know where to go, so you just drive around the town. I don't think I ever accomplished anything. With it, but yeah, I remember <laughs> I had I had that game. That's uh, pretty crazy for a Nintendo game. Yeah, it, w- it was, wasn't it? You would like yeah, because you'd find clues and then you'd switch back and mm-hmm. forth and. Uh, it would say go to like one B, and then you'd like have to find one B on the grid, which I never did, and go to was, that building. It was a stupid kid, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so I remember that more than the toy line. Ah, the toy line was really cool. They were, I want to say, four inch figures. They were really neat because they were really odd looking. Well, you know, like well, all, yeah, the, all the bad yeah. guys in the film, and they were just like so in line with nineties gross out culture of ninja turtle toys and toe jam and earl and like the the weird dick tracy villains and yeah teenage mutant ninja turtles for sure that's i'm glad you mentioned batman 89 ninja turtles and dick tracy because that's like my childhood those are toss in space jam (laughs) and it's like that's what i watched as a kid yeah those turtle movies even the third one i watched that one all the time oh where they like go back in time Uh Now it's like, oof, that's rough. But as a kid, that was like the I've thing. I've got all three of them on Blu-ray at home. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I found them on DVD. I, I found them at Walmart in like the $5 bin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a, couple, like a couple Christmases ago. And like, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't pass those up. Of course. I kind of um, want to do the live action uh, Ninja Turtles movie. The first one? It's, yeah, the first one. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, let me talk about the cast. We'll get into this cast. It's stacked. Um, the, and I didn't write down every single one because be, I'd be here all day. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of older actors that did this as like a favor to Warren Beatty. And right. That's what made Which is really maybe cool. why I mistakenly thought... I thought Bob Hoskins played a villain in this movie. But yeah. He doesn't. No. But he could have. Yeah, he, it it would have been appropriate. Yeah. Um, so, of course, starting with uh, Warren Beatty, uh, he starred, directed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I never realized how much he actually directed. Like, he directed a lot of his films that he was in. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why I never realized that. I guess <laughs> I never really looked. But uh, quite the director. It's just stuff you don't pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, Madonna, of course. Uh, William Forsyth. 
yeah. been on the show before. Uh, I think I did it with Brian. We talked about how uh, Devil's Rejects. Yeah, you did Devil's Rejects yep. and House of a Thousand Corpses without yeah, yeah, dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> William Forsyth was in uh, in the latter. Uh, Al Pacino uh, was the main baddie. Great. Dustin Hoffman, uh, who plays Mumbles, he's always fantastic. This is interesting. Uh, James Caan and Kathy Bates. Mm -hmm. um, I'll come back to this in trivia, but Kathy Bates and James Caan, there's a cool correlation with Warren Beatty in two films that came out in 1990. Oh. So I'll come back to that later. But Kathy Bates is in there as a stenographer briefly. Yeah, she's uh, good in everything. Trying to like, what Mumbles is saying? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, what do you call it? Like the court? Stenographer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And she's just like looking like what? Yeah, I have no idea. I thought Dustin Hoffman's performance in this movie was brilliant. If, if, yeah, for like, whatever he was in. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? That's like that's like awesome acting. <laughs> how how the fuck do you do that and not make it stupid? And he had a ton of uh, facial shit on too. Yeah. They they had they, they all did. did. I want to I want to talk about that. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to for, that later. For sure, there's, for sure. there's so much to talk about. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and the last person I want to mention, uh, I think is really cool is Dick Van Dyke plays mm -hmm. the uh the the district attorney um and that, that's that's yeah <laughs> that's one of the uh the older kind of uh actors that kind of did it as a favor to warren mm -hmm. Beatty. and so i mean there's a laundry list of them but dick van dyke stands out everybody knows dick van dyke i i haven't still going strong i know i haven't seen it yet but it's how cool is it that he's still going he's in the new mary poppins that's amazing movie. and he's up there dancing around and doing crazy right. shit like maybe that was cgi yeah i'm sure that dude's gonna be how old is dick he van dyke has. he's got to be in his 90s i would say 90 90 probably 90 yeah Julie Andrews is still going too. She was just in Aquaman. Right. It's crazy. That's it's really cool that uh, Nicole Kidman. That people from yeah yeah uh, she's not she's not that old, old but I mean but yeah she's still kicking ass. It's cool that a lot of these people from our childhood are still influencing today. Yeah. It's kind of scary to think about what it's going to be like in fifteen years. Who's, right. Who's going to take the torch from all these people? Um, so I already mentioned directors Warren Beatty. Um, the writers, the writers, Jim Cash, and, uh, he's done Top Gun, Anaconda, uh, obviously this, and... I've never seen Anaconda, have you? Oh, yeah. Really? Is it yeah. good? Yeah, it's all, it's yeah. shut up, I like this, for Okay. Sure. Maybe um, we'll do that one someday, uh, I don't know. Uh, John Voight in that movie's hilarious. Ice Cube is in it. Yeah, you're kind of selling me on it. It's, it's fun. And, uh, Chester Gold, who wrote all the original... 30s and 40s dick tracy uh-huh uh comic strip books everything he he was in on this uh, I, that's all he's done all he's written is uh is dick tracy why wouldn't you get him so that that's of course cool. yeah um before we get into it um did you have you ever read the comics or any of the books or anything i i kind of touched upon my dick tracy fandom at the beginning of the podcast with the toys mm -hmm. and the nintendo game and the movie and that's about as far as it goes. I've never gotten into books or comics or or there anything was, from uh, it. There was a, um, I don't know what you would call it, but it was like a, uh, it was a book with a bunch of little stories in it. Yeah. I forget what you call it. But it probably had like four or five Dick Tracy stories. Mm -hmm. And I got it for Christmas one year from my parents. Uh, I was still in middle school and I remember reading it then. All I can remember is like, something with a record store and dick tracy and this guy were fighting at the top of the tower and it was like rockefeller tower or something that's all i remember yeah. but I, I like i've read some of the stories but i don't remember a thing you know that. i think we're allowed to say they're a little before our time yeah but I mean, <laughs> sure we're dealing what 1940s yeah but i mean when dick tracy first came out right so i don't feel too bad i think um I want to kind of get into this before we, we start with the film because Dick Tracy for it is thirties, forties comic books. It has this one kind of blockbuster film. It had some like shorts and stuff, black and mm -hmm. white shorts. Um, but Dick Tracy, 1990, a lot of people remember this film, but for the newer generation, I don't, you don't see, see, this is what I think is I fun about this podcast is we talk about stuff that people don't, talk about yeah. as much uh the perfect example what was that game movie that we did stay alive stay alive no one talks about stay alive 
But then there are people in that horror movie Facebook group that you added me to that are oh, like, yeah. you know, this movie's actually really good. And then you see other people comment and they're like, so there are people that like this shit. Yeah. And Dick Tracy is the same way. There's not too many people out there in 2019 that are talking about Dick Tracy. But if you start a conversation, people our age will come out and be like, yeah, I remember that. That was really cool. That was good. Come out of our computers. Yeah. Come out of hiding. You guys, digital, you guys talking about Dick Tracy? Digital hiding. Ah, Dick Tracy. <laughs> I put pants on for this yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, uh, but I don't know. Do the younger kids? I don't know. So I like. It's got a decent cast. For us. So, well, yeah. But I mean, like, people my brother's age, like 19, 20, I don't know that they... Care about Dustin Hoffman and no. Madonna? N no, definitely not. Um, so I like what I want to talk about was like if they were to redo this film today, do a remake, sure, in 2019. First of all, the first question is do you think that it would even have legs nowadays? Uh, I thought about that a little bit too. Uh, it could, but they have to avoid the mess that was the Lone Ranger film. Like, you know, how Lone Ranger had a uh, huge fucking budget mm -hmm. that Lone Ranger didn't need to have. Right. You can't do that. And then that movie went with kind of a tired cast and uh, Johnny Depp. Man, Johnny Depp is played Tonto. out. So that was, we don't that need was that. And I love Army Hammer. Uh, I liked him as Lone Ranger. Yeah. I, I thought he would have been good. If, I did like, too. The story was... But it wasn't... Man, I didn't work. They tried making it bigger than it had to be. Right. So if you do Dick Tracy, it can't be Lone Ranger. It has to be more Sin City and less Lone Ranger. Like Sin City. Yeah, I like that. Sin City was a passion project for Robert Rodriguez. It didn't have a big budget. I don't. I mean, in the grander, not, not compared. In to the that. grander scheme yeah. of things, it didn't have a big budget. Uh, you can do Dick Tracy. Kind of that black, even doing that black and white film noir kind of thing would be perfect for cool. Dick Tracy. It would be cool. Super cool. I think you could. I think someone should. I think Dick Tracy is the perfect property. To bring back right to br now? To bring back right now. I'm, yeah, I would agree with you there. Definitely, especially with the huge superhero craze. Mm -hmm. I mean, every week there's a new superhero film. Um, something like this, kind of that detective film noir uh, mystery, badass detective kind of. I think that would really stand out, and especially if you. I like that Sin City analogy. If you did it yeah. like Sin City, with the black and white, like how they do it to abstract with different colors, mm -hmm. black and white, and just show his yellow suit would be fucking would cool. stand out uh -huh. really good. Um, so I like that. That's a cool idea. I yeah, that's kind of what because I thought about that a little bit beforehand too, and I don't know. I think I think you could. I think Dick Tracy, it's a name. Like, even if even if your brother, who's 19, never seen Dick Tracy, doesn't really know the name, but... They would recognize you. Re oh, that's a name I recognize. You put it on a marquee, and people will recognize it. And it's a loose enough franchise that you can kind of... You can play with it. You can play with the world. You mm -hmm. can play with the cool villains and whatever. And you can tell a story. And it doesn't have to be... I mean, there, I, there's a plethora of stories to right. choose from. But you could do you could do an original mm -hmm. story for the film. You totally could. Awesome. And like, you know how in Batman, when you go to do the Joker... He's tired. Well, we all know what the Joker is because we have so much source material. We're also familiar with it. We have expectations for what the Joker is. Dick Tracy is more open. Yeah. So you can you can play with it more. Like you can't really change the Joker too much. People get pissed off. Yeah. Jared Leto, people get pissed off if you try to change him too much. You can do whatever you want to Dick Tracy villains. All you gotta do is keep the name and the yellow trench coat and the setting, you know, nineteen forties yeah, gangster like the, yeah. New York. You keep that and then it that that's an open slate. I like that. And I like how you could 
kind of go either way, like with the Sin City vibe, how it could be a little maybe grittier, darker. You could. It could be badass, but at the same time, you, you, you kind of uh, you want to keep it a little cheesy, you can a, make little, a little, a little of, comedy, like a Marvelish, if you will. Yeah, Dick Tracy, yep. like that would be cool too. Kind of a. Uh, 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 not, I mean, not purposely like in your face cheese, but you could have it a little silly, a little tongue in cheek. Yeah, a little, exactly. A little tongue in cheek would be perfect. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that'd be cool. A little as bit. Hell. Like, yeah. yeah, that kind of vibe. So you could. It's really cool because who owns this? Is this Warner Brothers? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if this is. Do, what... I well, do, I wonder if Chester Gold still like if he sold the rights, or if like he still owns them. I see. I don't know because I think he passed. Um, late 90s maybe? yeah so i almost wonder if like his maybe is if he has children i guess i didn't what look that far estate, into it what the or, estate has yeah. done with it if they've sold it if they own it yeah so that or... that would be something to look into i'm not sure where the rights are with it yeah i don't know but if if this were to be made into a film they could like we just said they could go either way with it and i think either way would still be good mm-hmm um, so that leads me to my next question. I gave you some time to think okay. about it before we started recording. Sure. Um, I'll let you go first. I, I like your answer. Yeah. So in this world of a Dick Tracy remake, who are some actors that you think could, uh, could uh the, the first one for Dick Tracy that popped into my mind was Clive Owen. I really like that. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, me some Clive, Owen. Clive Owen, he can be a badass. You can put him in the yellow trench coat and he could look cool in it with mm-hmm. Tommy gun. Like he can pull off that look. And then if you also go a little, Little tongue in cheek, a little Guardians of the Galaxy. He can be funny, like he can pull off being serious. He can pull off being funny at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that would be really cool. He's my first choice. Army Hammer. Yeah. Was my. I mean, that's com- funny that you mentioned uh, Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why. But I love Army Hammer. He needs like, he yeah. needs to be a thing. He needs to be in more movies. Yeah. I like both those picks. He can pull it off. Especially because Clive Owen, like you said, how he can be one, completely one way or the other. And you know, Sin City, he's fucking cool and badass. Oh, yeah, he was in Sin City. Yeah. And he, he was uh, Dwight. He, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And uh, But, I mean, it, he's in stuff uh, like Derailed, where he just plays a, a, a dad with a sick child. And he runs into a, um, a cash scheme run by Jennifer Aniston and her mm-hmm. husband. That's a great film I'd love to talk about. But... He can kind of play both sides of that coin, mm-hmm. where he's just kind of the everyman, or he's the cool badass. Well, what was the one where they, like, no one has kids anymore on the earth? No, uh, Children of Men. Children of Men, yep. That's a good That's one. A damn good one, too. Yeah, so of those two, I I, I definitely like Clive, Clive Owen would definitely be my top choice. And Army Hammer, more for a kind of... Uh, we just want to see him succeed. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> kind of the uh, the more comic-y, Marvel-y yeah. yep. kind of... I know it's not, a Mar- it's not a Marvel comic, I get it. <laughs> right. I'm just comparing the tone of like a Marvel film to a Dick Tracy, how it could be. Yeah. Um, I like both of those. I, I immediately thought and pictured John Hamm. That's another excellent choice. Um, we've seen John Hamm in a lot of 30s, 40s, Mad Men. Mm-hmm. We've seen him in that attire before. And he's got, I just feel like he's got the look. He's got that the jaw, you know, kind of the straight-faced. Yeah, the jaw uh, I feel like is important. Yeah. You've got to have a good jawline. And uh, he's he's just, uh, he's a good actor. I like the idea of John Hamm. He can, he I think he can kind of go either way as well. You think so? He's he's done a lot of comedy uh, in, in recent years, and he's kind of funny. Uh, Mad Men is a show I need to get into. I watched the first season when it was on TV when mm-hmm. I was still in high school, and uh, you just fell behind. But that uh, just from one season, like I was hooked. You know, good shows are good shows regardless if you watch them like when they're coming out or if you wait and just oh, yeah. and just binge watch yeah, the whole series I, I definitely once. Need to binge so it. i think i think mad men is done yeah isn't it i think so uh that would be perfect for when we get our blizzard outside next yeah. time yeah. just sit down and just watch a whole season of mad men yeah. in a day or That's, whatever it's been on my list for a while because yeah. um if i remember correctly i think it came out about the same time as walking dead i think so and uh, were, were they both amc too i think they both, both yeah they were both amc 
think so. Yep. And uh, I, I got on the Walking Dead train. And so I remember like trying to keep up with that. And that was the thing that I had to do. Oh, yeah. And then Mad Men fell to the side. But that's something I want to go back and watch. Uh, sometimes I think I like shows better when I can watch a whole series <laughs> yeah. at once. If I'd have watched Breaking Bad on TV, I don't know if I would have kept up with it. But because you can watch all of like season one of Breaking Bad all at once, and then you remember everything for season, it makes it better. Yeah. Because you pick up on everything that you would have forgot about if it was spread out between football and work and. What well, I just I uh, just binged, uh, not just it was a couple months ago, but um, oh Timothy Olaf Deadwood. I just been mm, yeah. I remember you talking about that, and that was that, I mean that was fifteen years old, and I watched it, and it's still phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so let's get into uh, after that. That's that's good. good. I like that conversation. Did like you have that. really quick? I wanted to ask you. I'm going to put you on the spot. Did you have any director in mind for like who would do a new Dick Tracy? Uh, I, do, do Shane, you do uh, uh, Shane, Shane Black. Oh, son of a! <laughs> was, that would be was my was my mode. answer. Yep. Yeah, that would be a yeah. I like that. If Russell Crowe was younger. Oh man, ah, you can still pull it off. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. There's no real age limit on. Yeah, like, I guess it doesn't have to be. Yeah, I I guess so, but I, that's the thing. I think what made uh, Warren Beatty so perfect for Dick Tracy was he was that perfect not too young not too old where he could still be kind of the chiseled guy chasing after the bad guys but kind of the old wise guy right he's not a rookie cop yeah then he's not a veteran cop yeah he's kind of a dumb analogy but you know you know what i mean like he's in the middle yeah um he's still kind of reckless and warren Beatty. um oh man He's a good-looking guy. Yeah. I'm sorry, but... Well, that's part of what makes it fun, too, is because the villains are so over-the-top yeah. and crazy. Very much uh, so. Weird, ugly-looking people. Mm-hmm. And then so Dick Tracy is kind of the... Piercing <laughs> eyes with the chisel jaw. Yeah. Which is... That was kind of where I was going from with Army Hammer, too. Uh, yeah, like, I see that. Clive Owen's kind of... He's charming, but he's like kind of the grizzled... A little bit. Yeah. I love Clive Owen. I, I really want a Dick Tracy reboot. Okay, now <laughs> now I, I've really it? talked myself into one. Li- and I like Shane Black a lot. Yeah. That would be great. I'm going to just start tweeting. I, <laughs> Shane Black and Clive um, Owen. I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm still tweet, tweeting I'm, this podcast. <laughs> I might, I'll still think about it. Maybe okay. uh, we'll come back to it later. I'll think of something good. Sure. Um, but. I forgot to mention the the uh, the Rotten Tomato score. Oh. Um, <laughs> so the uh, critic score is sixty four percent, which is about the same as last week um, when we talked about uh, Unleashed. Mm-hmm. Um, and the audience score is only fifty three percent. So this is actually one that we kind of it was a little backwards on, but yeah. we're a little we're a little, we're a little loose on that after a year. So fifty three percent for audience. Um, so getting into the film, um, the first thing I want to talk to you about, the first thing I want to mention is Danny Elfman. Um, oh, yeah, yes, I, I, the I, score, Danny yes. Elfman. Uh, I think that definitely plays into why it, it's a good movie on its own, but I think it's part of the reason that we remember it so well. Not only is it part of our childhood, but Danny Elfman was a part of our childhood. Oh. He's one of my favorite composers. Um, Batman, Dick Tracy, Spider-Man, he's everywhere. Uh-huh. And uh, as soon as I heard the, because I, I forgot, and as soon as I heard the Danny Elfman music, it was just like, memories. Yeah. It, it just took me back right away. Um, it, it puts this connection between Batman 89 and Dick Tracy. Like, there's like this weird little connecting thread between them where they're kind of similar films. Oh, I've got trivia. Uh, like we even joked about this when we were watching the movie about how they both had these really cool, amazing sets. Oh, yeah. And yes. then... Nobody else like, vi- like, visually, they're similar. They got Danny Elfman. They're kind of superhero. And then there's, like, no one on... Right. Any there, so there's no citizens in their beautiful this a, town. This was a different time yeah. of movie making. But just these really beautiful, empty sets. There's, like, two people 
Well, Kevin Smith said there was, what, like 15 people in, <laughs> in Batman, in, in Batman yeah. 89. That's the same thing for Dick Tracy. Where's this take place? New York? I, th I think Is so. It New, New York? Chicago, Chicago? Chicago. Maybe Chicago. Maybe Chicago. There's like 15 people right. in this little city. I remember I sent you that photo. Yeah, there's the, literally the, the three street. people walking there's the street. There's two cars and like... Two extras and two main characters, yes. and that's it. <laughs> and you see both sides of the street. You see both sidewalks. You yeah, see... and it's like a long yeah. shot down the street. It's like, yeah. well, it's a different time, folks. I, well, that's I have more in trivia about this, but I, I want to talk about the the painting, the paint backgrounds. I love it. It's beautiful. It's, it, yes. We just watched Aquaman, and Aquaman is, I think, the most visually stunning movie I've ever seen. It, was, it will be coming soon to shut up. I like this because we have to do it for DC. But We have to. Uh, visually, to take us to the bottom of the seas and show us Atlantis like that. And you forget. Never seen anything like you it. You just forget. Oh, people can't really talk underwater. <laughs> right, this yeah. is this is everything I'm watching is fake. It's, it's made all up. it's all it on a green all, screen. Yeah, yeah, it was all made up in a computer you just forget. somewhere. Some guy uh, just sat there for the last 16 months with a team making Atlantis. Right. And one guy was pulling out his hair as he was trying to digitally enhance their hair. Jason Momoa's hair. Float that's water. all he did for two years. Was yeah. Jason Momoa's hair. That's that his, would be awful. That's his credit. Yeah. <laughs> and one guy uh, was doing the bubbles and one guy was doing... It's right. Like, oh, my God. That's all they did. But it, Aquaman uh, is visually Right. Phenomenal. Dick Tracy is also beautiful in a different in a kind of way. In, way. In, in that old school way that Batman is. That yes. You just don't see movies like this anymore. And I love that. I love it too. There's something about the matte board paintings that even if you you can tell that they're paintings, but it doesn't matter because like, the, the work that took mm -hmm. to create something like that, and especially in a time before CGI when this was sure. kind of their only way to do it, is just breathtaking. Which is why I said if you're going to reboot it, you keep it a lower budget because you don't need to spend a billion dollars yeah. and do a visual over the top thing with Dick Tracy. No, nah, you we keep talked, it. Uh, what was uh, when we talked about Gangster Squad? Sure. How they kind of it was uh, it was 1930s Chicago. It wasn't over the top, mm -hmm. but you could tell it was the 30s. Something like that. Yeah. Josh Brolin as Dick Tracy. Ooh, oh, that's cool. He might be he'd be a good villain. Yeah, yeah. He'd be good either or. But yeah, I like that. Clive Owen, Clive Owen, Ooh. fighting Josh Brolin, this big bad guy. That, oh, they were both Dwight. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I always thought it would be cool. Like, how come nobody has really taken, like, and do an updated, like, an HD matte painting, like effects in a film, like. Take the old school way we used to do it, only do it in HD and just use it. You know what I mean? It would be it would be a cool like uh, like a cool side passion project because I don't think anything like that would would make it to theaters much. I don't think it would be more of like a uh, 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 I don't even know what you would call it, like a festival yeah. film. Kind sure. Of thing. It'd be like a, oh yeah, look what I did in my free time. I did a cool throwback. To, to 90s and 80s. I don't know. I think you could. I, I think I you could. Know. I think you could do it. It'd be cool for people like us, but to get like a, a mainstream audience behind mm -hmm. it, I don't think you could do it. Mm -hmm. It'd have to be like a like a a particular festival where you knew people who wanted to see it would be there. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. I I would go see it though. I I, I, love, I, definitely I love the art style. It, it would be cool if somebody like Tarantino or somebody like one of those directors who's like a big film buff, uh -huh. if they would do something like that, I think then maybe you could put it mainstream. But if it wasn't somebody like that, or even like Kevin Smith, if Kevin Smith did you Dick Tracy. some kind of a Kevin Smith, Dick Tracy film. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> I mean, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Um, just Dick Tracy standing outside a convenience <laughs> store. I would fucking watch the shit out of that. That would be good. Um, Played by Jason Mewes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What's up, big boy bitch? Oh my god, it writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> big um, boys, big bitch. <laughs> um, anyways, so well, 
I have more about it in trivia, but while we're talking about it, kind of that similarity between Batman 89 and this, um, one thing I wanted to mention is Dick Tracy had the Batman skylight entrance when he drops through the top. Oh, of the yeah. Boat. I immediately thought... Connect like, your threads, man. I'm, like, tell, I'm yeah, telling you. There's a lot of them. Uh, which, Maybe that's why I love this movie so much. It probably it reminds is. me so much of Batman. Yeah, it probably is. Um, and I'll get more into it in trivia. I keep saying it, but I'm stringing you along. Um, so do you have... Uh, uh, do we talk about first experiences? Like, I guess um, we were both children. A, a little bit, just watching it yeah. as a kid. And I don't really remember the first time. Yeah. Just, I just, um, just a bunch of times as a kid. I remember having it on the, the VHS that I talked about. So that was kind of my first experience. Um, but I actually, I bought this on, I thought I had the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. I just have the DVD. I don't Hasn't. know. I don't know where I got it from. What? <laughs> <laughs> Not nothing. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I don't... called you a peasant. Oh, because I have a DVD. A DVD. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, what like, is this non-HD format? Where, where did I get the DVD from? Like, where did they have Dick Tracy on DVD at? I don't know. I must have bought it somewhere. It's, it's a good pawn shop by... And did you ever go to the pawn shop? No, yeah. You know, like in Fort Dodge, yeah. like when DVDs were dirt cheap there? Yeah. That would have been a good... I don't know. I, I don't know. know. Well, that's interesting. But yeah, so I watched this on DVD... And uh, there was like fifteen more minutes or something. Did nice. you did you notice? Uh, did you watch like the director's cut or something? I don't know because I watched it online. Oh, okay, uh, so I don't know what cut. Um, I was I, I was watched. reading that like the original cut was like two hours and ten minutes, and he had to cut it down to one forty five. Sure. And so I think I watched like the director's cut, and there was a little bit more. I mean, what, like, it didn't change the film at all, but yeah. it was just like extra scenes, extra little clips and stuff. Huh. Cool. Um, so that's what I watch. Um, do you have a favorite mm. scene we could talk about? Uh, I kind of have two. One of them is more of like a Moment. a specific shot. It was the one where he's in the full like Dick Tracy outfit. They're having the shootout, and he's got the Tommy gun. And there's that really cool shot of just Dick Tracy just like firing towards yeah. the camera. And like that, that whole sequence was really good. Yeah. And then I just love the moment of Dustin Hoffman uh, <laughs> where they're playing the, the tape recording of him. <laughs> he plays it really slow. And he plays it really slow. And then you can understand what he says. Big boy did it. Big boy did it. <laughs> like, I, I, I love that. That's, <laughs> that's so stupid. But I, I, and I like, I like, like, mumbles is like, I, uh, it's just like a thing that he does. It's not like against his will. Yeah. Because that's... that, because then he's just like, 88 keys, <laughs> piano guy. He took her. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the hell? Doesn't everyone at some point work with someone like that? Like, haven't you worked with someone who just fucking mumbles all the time? I used to be really bad at yeah. it. Yeah, I used to be the mumbler. Um, even, like, I think doing this has kind of helped a lot. Just talking once a week like this for a couple hours. Oh, sure. Film. I think it's more natural. Yeah, for sure. I, like, I should have started doing this years ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's helped me a lot. But, yeah, I, that drives me nuts now. Mm -hmm. Fucking mumblers. Um, those, I, those were my two. I that end shootout though is good is great, but why do they drive out one at a time <laughs> to just get shot? We I can't all be the yeah. shootout scene in heat, uh, Joe. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, I would have to. I I'm kind of like you. Like, there's a lot of like images, cool moments, cool, cool images. moments. Um, I especially like there's that cool shot where it comes and it, you see the city and you see through the window at the beginning of Dick Tracy getting his hat and everything and walking out the door. Mm -hmm. Just cool little shots like that, like in 1990 of how they, yeah, the matte paintings and everything. And it's just it's amazing. Beautiful. It's fun to look at. Um, but I would, I, I like, I like the opening uh, warehouse scene. Where you see like Little Face and all those guys playing poker. I love Little Face. Little Face. <laughs> um, and then uh, Big Boy comes in and his posse shoots them all up and the eat lead Tracy into the side of the wall. Like that's, that's just good. that's just that's a good. thing that is like the you think of like little mobsters shooting stuff from the side of the wall mm -hmm. and it's Dick Tracy, but because I can't think of any other like film where. Because that's what I always think of, though. You always think of, yeah. Yeah. 
and the the high pitched weird voices, like Home Alone, uh, right? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Take the change. That's Real more John Wayney, but yeah, but but yeah, I, uh, Ryan Gosling and Gangster Squad, how mm. he talked. I thought that was so cool, and I like how. Oh, these guys, it's almost like they're all Ryan Gosling. There's a Dick Tracy for you. Ooh, a little bit younger, but yeah. He can pull it off. I like that. He can totally pull it Especially off. Especially with if he uses the voice in Gangster Squad. You can picture him like smoking in the in the setting oh, in yeah, the forties. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've seen it. There's a there's a lot of good actors that you can pull. There's yeah, there'd be a lot of good Dick Tracys. Um there was uh, I didn't write it down because I didn't I, you can't really trust the casting stuff. But of the names that they listed as possible Dick Tracy's, I could really only see like Warren Beatty and maybe like Mel Gibson. For the time? Yeah. For the period. There was a whole there's stuff like De Niro. De Niro's phenomenal, but he's not Dick Tracy, yeah. I don't think. Uh you would have went too over the top with it. Even Nicholson was yeah, on see, there. You would have went too You would have been but kind of what makes this film work is that all of the villains are way over the top, and Dick Tracy is kind of like a he he's funnels the performance to like a grounded performance right. a little right, bit. Right, right, right. You know he, what I mean? He's the, he's the uh, he yeah he's the grounding for the yes. You you have to have in a movie that's that over the top with Al Pacino. Every every scene with him is just fucking over the top. Very over the top. He, he's a, he's a, yelling. He, and he cranks it up to eleven and stays there through the duration of this film. Yes, you could not. That's something I wrote. Yeah, I said Al Pacino does not shut up in this film. Ever. No, it's amazing. He uh, just talks and talks and talks. You could not have Jack Nicholson as Dick Tracy turning it up to twelve to try to be over like. Right. It would be too much. Like you can't do that. You have to. You have to have a point that funnels it back down to, mm. to a normal performance. Yeah, that's yeah, what a normal performance. A normal performance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you're dealing with it, people called Little Face that are fucking huge heads. I mean, yeah. you you have to like have a normal size head. It's just a little face. Just a little face. Yeah. Head. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's so the, stupid. It's good. But I mean, at the same time, with their performances and against the mat paintings it's almost like watching a play yeah it is isn't it uh that's because a, that's a good analogy because with with matt pa the big thing with paintings is you can't pan and swoop because then you'll see the the different angles of the Ed edges painting. of it or whatever and so you oh, always it's actually stay, flat yeah yeah so like, you have to keep the camera still and it's like you're watching a play and well then when you get these over-the-top performances it kind of puts you into that seat where you're watching, mm -hmm. you know, a couple actors on stage, and of course they're tr they're trying to promote mm -hmm. out emote out into the uh, into the ether. Patrick Stewart, nineteen nineties <sighs> Patrick Stewart is Dick no Tracy. Way. You don't think so? No, you don't believe? I, don't know. Uh, I believe he can do anything. But I I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, if, I don't know if it would because he would have had to like. He would, have, he would have had to hit the weight. You know what I mean? A little bit. I don't know. Picard, he was kind of... Yeah. TNG was, like, kind of kind of over the top. But, like... I don't know. He he has good, he does a lot of theater and stuff. Yeah, that's why when you yeah, said I theater, would, I thought right, Patrick right, right. Stewart. Okay. It's, it's Jeff. It's Patrick Stewart. Know, anyway, Patrick that's, that's, that's enough with our fantasy casting. Your fantasy casting. Yeah. <laughs> Ian McKellen as Big Boy. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Um, I for completely forgot what I was talking about. Can we talk more about Al Pacino since we're yeah, kind of yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, cast yeah. and stuff? Yep, 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 yep. How good? Good and terrible. Uh, this is like, good. Yeah, like, no, I get it. But, like I said, he, he cranks that dial all the way up oh, and stays shit. there. Yeah, every scene he's he's shouting or yelling or. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's what makes it good. Or it makes it funny when he's talking to all the gangst, fucking Joker in '89 when he's talking to the table full of gangsters. Oh yeah, when uh -huh. <laughs> oh, but she, and how he starts really low like this, but then by the end of every sentence he's doing this. Uh huh. Every sentence it's like. Fucking come back down a little nah, bit. Nah, nah. Walnuts. 
Love walnuts. Really good for you. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, he's got the prosthetics on. Mm-hmm. And there's something about actors where you put enough prosthetics on them, they can just... They feel like they have to break out. They Yes. That that's sense. that's what that's what he did. Yes, that I mean you hear about again with Batman eighty nine. You hear about Nicholson talking about that. He felt mm-hmm. underneath all that makeup and everything, he had to push out, turn that it. dial all the way up, and yeah. just go for it. It's crazy. Um, so I, 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 you know, honestly, let me take a little bit of a beating in this one. I'm not a big Al Pacino fan. Oh. Like, oh, it takes a certain <laughs> movie for me to heat. Heat, I love heat. heat. Uh, but some, some um, of the comedy stuff that he's done, like later on, like in Jack and Jill and stuff. Yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> of Gotta it. get my Dunkachino. I hate you for that. <laughs> uh, this one is one that I really like Al Pacino in for some reason. Um, that and you know it's funny that you said that because now I was trying to think of like I mean Godfather stuff like that. Yeah, or like his earlier stuff where. Uh, Serpico, have you seen Serpico, where he's the detective? Uh, I guess I'm not familiar with that. Uh, Serpico is one of his earlier ones. That's a great, great one. But you're right. As he kind of got older, uh, kind of, kind of, uh, kind of turned into his own little joke. He kind of turned into a parody of himself. Yes. And I guess yes. that's what I do oh. like. Yes. Um, I think there was one like 88 minutes or something where he was like trying to. There's some kind of bomb, and he was good. I don't know. There was a college or something, and it was just over the. Oh, top. 88 minutes. Yeah, that. But, What's that? But that one was like 24, where it played out in real time. Yeah. Over the film. That I re- sounded like a good idea. I do remember watching that one at the video store. But uh, it was a little. It, Isn't it was Geely? A lot of over the top. <laughs> Insomnia. That's Insomnia a great. Insomnia is good. That's Christopher Nolan, right? Yes. Um, Devil's Advocate, he's fine in. Heat. Heat, of course, we just mentioned. Um, Dick Tracy, Dick Tracy Godfather. Godfather films. Scarface. Oh, duh, of course. Okay, so maybe I should kind of take back what I said about Pacino. But, I mean, look at how many he has in between that are just, like, he made, but it was... So, like, where are some of the newer ones? Where, I like that... Where he's kind of a parody. I guess mostly I should just say I don't like him in Jack and Jill. <laughs> really? Yeah. You should watch Serpico. Okay. Serpico is really good. I think it might have been like his first or second film. Because I, th- I think Godfather was his first film. Mm-hmm. And then maybe Serpico. We're doing, we're doing that thing where the people at home are yelling at <laughs> yeah. us for not... It was his third film! fucking idiot! <laughs> um, no, I think Godfather was his first film and then Serpico was second. So, yeah, you should watch Serpico. Okay. Um, but, yeah, in this in this film, how he kind of goes above and beyond second, it makes sense. This is his second film. Godfather and then... Oh, no, there's that stuff. No. Me, Natalie, and the Panic in Needle Park. So third and fourth. The Panic in Needle Park. Hmm. I was close. Um, so, I mean, while we're talking about uh, Al Pacino, we keep referencing Batman 89. I'm just going to drop this real quick. Kathy Bates and James Caan both had roles in this. Um, of course, they were kind of shortened. The reason is Warren Beatty was set to direct... And act in misery. Okay. When he dropped out to do Dick Tracy, James Conn and Kathy Bates, of course, did misery, and they came and did small bit parts in this. Oh, cool. Which I thought was just That's kind of turn, a yeah. cool little piece. Um, and it's kind of crazy that you get all these big name people to. Okay, th- this is how I'm going to explain it because Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman, uh, James Caan, William Forsyth, all these people, uh, I th- a list actors, mm-hmm. um, and to get them to do, you know, like Freddie and Jason oh. level shit over their face, right? Put on and, a bunch and, of makeup, not, come, come it, ham it up. Yeah, like I, you wouldn't think that that's asking a lot. It's just doing their mm-hmm. job, and you get a great performance. Um, my oldest daughter, they just put on all the Power Ranger series on netflix 
Like the original? All of them, yeah. Nice. So, Did you watch it? Yeah, so we've been watching like Mighty Morphin. We've been watching the uh, original series and stuff. And I remember I bought the new movie they made, 2017. I was like, Drew, you want to watch that? She said, oh, yeah, yeah, let's watch that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, first it was terrible, but that's <laughs> beside the point. The point is, the five actors in it, when they had their Power Ranger suits on, a lot of the times they had their mask off so you could see their face. And that's just that's in this the, world. That's today, a new trend that we a, do. Yeah, uh, people are afraid to cover their face. Marvel is getting really bad for that too. And now every superhero, ha- like, like uh, Black Panther stands out. The first time you see Black Panther, it's a helmet, and he has to put the helmet on and off. And I like that because that's cool. Because that's a tangible thing. Oh right, it's a helmet. And like Civil and, War. Uh, yeah, in Civil War. And then in the next movie, it's suddenly future tech where he just goes whoop. Yeah. And just like dissolves away, and that's because they want to have all those. They want to be able to easily remove the mask, so that yeah, it's what's his name, Chadwick Boseman. Boseman, you can have him on screen, which I get. They're your actors; you're paying them a lot of money. But I'm going to see Black Panther. I'm not going or to see Chadwick Boseman. Spider Man. I'm going to see Spider Man. Yes. Not Tom, Tom Holland. Holland. Like Tom Holland's great. He's fine. That's awesome. I'm going to see Spider-Man. Yeah. Kind of what I like about Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie is that there's long sequences where it's the mask is on. Right. Even, yeah, at the end of Homecoming, his mask burns off. Or yeah, whatever. they always he have some his, bullshit reason. Yeah, he always has his mask off. And that's something that I can't stand now. Um, and it's funny that I just watched Power Rangers. That was kind of the perfect example along with Marvel mm-hmm. and, and superhero films. And so it's pretty amazing going back to 1990 with all these A-list people. Actually, you know, you don't, you never see fucking. We're gonna put, we're gonna put Al Pacino underneath a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's gonna act for us and not cry about it. Be oh, but they can't see my face. Yeah, it's like no, mm-hmm. that's not how it works. Um, so I, I that was a big point to me. So okay, so uh, it's any, trivia. Uh, well, final thoughts. Anything else you want to mention about Dick Tracy? We've covered it pretty good. I think I've hit most of the points that that yeah. I wanted to on this one. Uh, we didn't really talk too much about like the plot or anything or like what happens. But... Yeah, and I don't. Um, we didn't talk about Madonna. We won't talk about Madonna. I want to talk about Madonna for a minute okay. because you forget the we, immortal Madonna. I forget. You forget. Your brother has no idea because he's too young. People don't understand how big of a deal Madonna was in the eighties and even up into the nineties. Like. She was a huge fucking star. There's no equivalent of Madonna today. There's just there's just not. How cool was it that she was in this movie? She's well, she was in a lot of She's movies. She's in a lot of movies. Dick Tracy. That's cool. That's crap. a good that was a big get for this movie to yeah. have Madonna in it. And of course of course she sings. It kind of turns into a musical. A little bit. Dick Tracy the musical. <laughs> maybe maybe one too many musical numbers. Could, could more! Have. I want more! <laughs> that was good. That was a good, that was a good scene. Uh, she was enjoyable. In, no! She was in, enjoyable in this movie, and spoiler alert... Get a little nip action. A little bit. Uh, and black, was, through black lace. I was going to say, at the end of the movie, uh, it's revealed that she was... No face. No face, face under, under the mask, which was a cool look, too. Yeah, it's like Rorschach. That, that it's like was, Rorschach. Yeah. That, that was in like, I was reading something that, uh, well, maybe it's in trivia. If I, if I don't read it in trivia, okay. I'll uh, go back to it. But yeah, uh, Madonna is, is, still is. Like, she's immortal. Yeah. She's still going. She's putting out. I, I remember I was in middle school in like 2006, 2007. Maybe it was 2007. With, she came out with a song with like Justin Timberlake. Mm-hmm. She was still dancing around in her 50s. Yeah. Looking good. Like, wasn't she dating someone like half her age? Oh yeah, while, probably. Like, yeah, of course. During this film, uh, she was dating Warren Beatty. Was she? Yeah, they dated for like two years. Lucky guy, think they fucked on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, I, there's this uh, funny story with. Have you seen? Speaking of Tom Holland, he talks about he met Madonna. Uh-huh. And his friend was like, "That do you have you met Madonna? That's Madonna over there at some club." And he's like, "No, I've never met her." And his friend goes over and says, uh, "Would this that's Tom Holland? He's a new Spider Man stuff. Uh, he can dance." 
Did, did you dance com- with Madonna? It completely lied. Oh. <laughs> uh, Tom Holland went out and tried to dance with Madonna. Yeah. And like left her on the dance floor because <laughs> he got so embarrassed. That's amazing. Uh, Tom Holland is cool. And uh, he's a good young actor. I like him a lot. He said something. To, like he called his parents to tell him like he's met Madonna. Yeah. And his little brother said, "Who's Madonna?" <laughs> how don't you know Madonna? That's awesome. Um, yeah. How how many decades has she been around? Right. And this is like, this is really cool. I know this is ninety, and like people think her, you know, eighties was peak Madonna, mm-hmm. but this was still prime peak, time. Peak prime time Madonna. She just ditched the uh, the rubber bracelets and everything. And yeah, moving on to a new look. So who would who would replace her in the reboot? Is there anyone? Maybe Lady Gaga. Oh, I mean, I guess that's a weird thing about She's, Lady. Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga is a good actress. I like too. her in American Horror Story. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen the new. Yeah, the movie about her life. Well, that's a remake. Well, whatever. Classic. Uh, what the fuck is it called? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> this stuff pisses me off. Um, as soon as I try to remember something, I can't. We'll remember it as soon as we stop recording. Yeah. God damn it. Uh, but the, the new film with Bradley Cooper, it's back in the day was Chris Christopherson and, 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 and God damn it. Madonna. No. <laughs> but um, I haven't seen that yet. But I have no I've idea. Heard, I'm probably not going to watch that one. I don't I've care. I've heard uh, Lady Gaga does pretty well on that one. But I don't know. I would probably pick... Oh, Cardi man. B. <laughs> I can't really... It's, see, t- that's, it's that's, tough because there's, like I said, there's no real, like, who do you and who do you pick? There's no equivalent to... a lot of good music either. So. Yeah. Um, maybe even, like, Adele, maybe? I kind of like Adele. Maybe. Um, can she act? I don't know if she can yeah, act. Uh, and you know Lady Gaga can act. Yeah. That was why I would gravitate towards her. I can't even... I can't even think of... I don't, I don't yeah, have I don't a know. clue. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's do trust the trivia. <laughs> Madonna could still do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. De-age her. Well, you wouldn't even need to. No, she's immortal. Yeah. Um... So yeah, my, my final thoughts for me, I would just uh, definitely if it's been a while, like give it a watch. Um, oh, it's... there's there's a lot of it's it's pretty. It is very pretty to look at, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a lot of fun performances by very famous people. And uh, good, good <coughs> Warren Beatty, I love Warren Beatty. Yeah, so you you watch, it had been a while since I watched it too, too, and you forget how much I like this movie. Yeah, I like this movie a lot. How much you weigh? <laughs> 195, 196, 205. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good quote. It's just, it's just a lot of silly stuff, fun stuff, and it's a good, it's a, it's a good comic movie. It's mm-hmm. a good, it's a good film that takes the comic and turns it into a film yeah. by keeping what it's supposed to look like, keeping the suit, mm-hmm. not changing too much. It looks good. I think about the only uh, villain they changed was Al Pacino, because Big Boy Caprice was you know, a I'm, fat guy. I'm not familiar enough with the source material to even and care. So the, the way they changed <clears throat> it was instead of him being a big fat guy, they made him like have a the big nose, a big chin, big hands. Who's the guy who plays Kingpin in Daredevil? Uh, don't do this to me. There's your anyway. There's your uh, big boy for the. The reboot. Oh, man, all I can see is him in Law and Order, Criminal Intent. Uh, Vincent. D'Onofrio. <laughs> there you go. There you yes. go. Takes, it takes two of us, folks, but Vincent, we get there. Vincent D'Onofrio. Yep. Um, yeah. He'd be good. I like him. So uh, I got some. Tri- I've got quite a bit of trivia. Nice. There's, there was a lot of trivia for this film. Um, Warren Beatty hired Danny Elfman because of his work on Batman '89. Uh, I think it definitely. That's smart choice. Um. Elfman said of working with uh, Beatty that, quote, Warren was insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is the highest grossing film of Warren Beatty's career, which I think is pretty crazy considering all the films that he's been in. Uh, probably most notably like Bonnie and Clyde. Mm-hmm. And it, it's crazy that 1990, Warren Beatty, you think, yeah, he's been in quite a bit. 
he was in film in the 60s. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to think about. I, I didn't realize that by this time in his career, his career was going on for damn near 25 years. Yeah. Um, Al Pacino claims Madonna flashed him during rehearsals. So probably, probably she flashed everybody that watched the film. So <laughs> I don't, I don't see. It. She's she's done a lot of nude scenes and a lot of other films. I think there was one with uh, Willem Dafoe. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but they have a pretty oh, cool. intense sex scene in that. Warren Beatty has a 2010 TV movie called The Dick Tracy Special, what? where he reprises the role of Dick Tracy. No way, Dick Tra- Warren Beatty in character as Dick Tracy is interviewed. By oh Leonard Malton, so he like interviews the character. Thirty minute short documentary has old movies. I like, wonder if that's on the DVD. I don't know. What the fuck is that? I wanted to read it. Oh, he's a grumpy elf. <laughs> yes. Uh, this 30-minute short documentary has old movie expert Leonard Malton narrating uh, largely movie history of Chester Gold, square-jawed comic hero. So it's a documentary about Dick Tracy. That's cool. I'd watch it. Warren Beatty. So I wonder if they just show clips from the movie and credit Warren Beatty. Maybe. That seems more likely. Yeah. I'd watch that, though. That sounds cool. Yeah, I'd watch it, too, because I don't know much about... He's got a bunch of uh, newer stuff, though, doesn't he? What's that one? 2016? 2016, and then a Jimmy Kimmel. What's that? He pl- Oh, he plays Howard Hughes? Dire- oh, of course, he's the director. He wrote it. Hmm. Huh, I might have to check that out. Rules Don't Apply, 2016. Warren ba- if you like Warren Beatty, check that out. Um, this is pretty crazy. This is a comic, a comic-based movie with the most Oscar wins, three, followed by The Dark Knight with two. What did this one win for? Special uh, effects? I didn't write it down. Mm, I should have. I'm dead. sorry. Oh, you got IMDb there. <laughs> okay. you, you Macaulay Culkin was considered for the role of the kid. That would have been, well. But turned it down for Home Alone. He probably made a right choice. Yes, otherwise our Christmases would have been ruined for the rest of our life. Um, let's see, where am I at? Uh, Warren Beatty considered appearing in and directing Misery, but chose this instead. Um, and James Caan and Kathy Bates came over and did some small bit parts in this. The movie was nominated and won a lot of shit. Um, it was the winner for the Oscar for Best Director. Oh, cool. It was nominated for Best Picture. Jesus. It was nominated for Best Actor in a Leading Role. It was nominated for Best Writing uh, Screenplay. And then, I mean, it's won, it, it won a Golden Globe Best Director. It was a nominee for Best Actor in Golden Globes. I mean, it's got a lot of... So, just the one Oscar win? Oscar winner for Best Director. So it I w- won one and was nominated for three. Oh, okay. So, I wonder if this was... Four. Nominations. One, two, three... Yeah, four nominations, one win. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's for great. A, Cheesy fucking comic book movie in 1990. Yeah. That's awesome. That validates us liking it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, suck it, Rotten Tomato, even though you scored it higher than the audience. Um, 21 villains from Chester Gold's comic make an appearance. Cool. Um, And all 21 are... Fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, And Warren Beatty did it. Uh, for fear that there wouldn't be a sequel, so he wanted to get as much out there for the fans as he could. I get it. And uh, it's pretty awesome. There's quite a few. Uh, Tim Burton was offered to direct this, but did Edward Scissorhands instead. Probably a good choice. Uh, And I talked about this earlier. Madonna and Warren Beatty were dating during Mm -hmm. this film. Um, And this is one of the last films ever to do painted backgrounds before CGI blew up. So 1990 was like that cutoff of, of the, the map. What was Jurassic Park? 93. 93, yep. That had a couple, was, yeah. That was the, well, that was. That was mostly CG. That, that was the shift. That but was the shift to like, it. oh, this is how we're going to make movies from this point forward. 
It still had some backgrounds in it. Yeah. No. I guess not. I, I, I like really, the, I the don't. fence and stuff. I don't think Jurassic Park cool. did. Yeah. That was I can't, success. I guess I can't think of any. I can't think of I'm, any. I'm thinking of the big budget movies like Terminator, well, it's Terminator 2. Because uh, <laughs> it was 92. 92. I, th I think. Because that was one of the first big, like, special, like, with James Cameron, with, like, the, uh, what was he, the team, uh, the liquid guy. T-1000. T-1000. Was one of the first big special effects, like, computer special effects. And T2, yeah, so... T2 wouldn't have had any, any background paintings in no, it. No, that didn't. But I know you did the first one. Well, maybe the, maybe the first one... The opening shot where they're showing the future world where the oh yeah that runs remember it runs over the human skulls and like uh, you look in the very like the very background maybe was yeah I can see that what year was that eighty seven no the first that, Terminator eighty four yeah I think it was eighty four because like Commando and stuff was like eighty seven Predator oh yeah. That's interesting. So, I mean, right around this time is kind of the, Terminator Two. A huge shit. Terminator Two was ninety one. Oh wow! Terminator was eighty four. Okay, so we had that right. Yeah, that's crazy to think about. That you can very visibly see that ship. That's kind of cool, though. Mm -hmm. Go eighty nine, ninety. You think of Batman and Dick Tracy, and then ninety one you have T two, ninety three you have Jurassic Park. Jurassic Jurassic Park changed the world. Boom. Yeah. Wow. That's just cool to think about. It gives you kind of and what's response. what's crazy is that this has aged better than some movies that came out after it. Yeah. Because of because the, of the early because CGI. of the early CGI like uh Independence Day. Uh, some of the stuff in Independence Day is really rough to go back and watch. Hmm. Uh the part where the dog jumps. Because that was miniatures that they blew up and stuff. So And some. Let's see. Yeah, like the White House was a miniature, but that, yeah. Yeah, that, that but CGI like, like flame the, and stuff. The, 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 the dog jumping the forward tunnel. through the flame, the tunnel. Uh, there was some other shit in there, too. I can't think of. I can never think when the camera's on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. And yeah, so that was closing up trivia. It was mm -hmm. the last, kind of the last one to do painted backgrounds before CG blew up. And that was a cool little uh, glimpse into that time period mm -hmm. of like everything that came out and and uh, the the evolution of CG. Where we are now, talking about, we just talked about Aquaman. Aquaman. Uh, two completely different time and movies, but both beautiful in their mm -hmm. own sense. What's the budget for Dick Tracy? Um, I didn't see the budget, but this made $162 million at the box office Damn. in 1990. Um, I don't know what the budget was, though. But this was his highest grossing film, so couldn't have been uh, too high. Uh, internet says $47 million. Wow. So i full of shit earlier when I called it a lower budget film. Yeah, because what was Batman 89? That was uh, probably about that, wasn't it? Maybe. Sit here in silence while you do this. How fast can Kyle type? <laughs> 35. This has a higher budget. Wow. Higher budget. Well, more practical effects. What you said, what, 21 villains? That's 21 unique yeah. characters that they had to do practical effects for it's a lot of makeup and every time you rip it off you ruin a prosthetic you got to make a new one that's a lot of work and plus plus the background sets and but i mean that batman did that too they both had the matte paintings and mm -hmm. they had to create their own city and everything so that's that's crazy that's a weird little stat dick tracy cost more to make than batman 89 What'd you say Batman 89 was? 30 something? What? 30 something? And Dick Tracy was 40? Yeah. You know what Aquaman was? 200 million. 200 million. <laughs> That's crazy. 
That's but, the, that's the scary thing, though. You spend two hundred million on a movie, you've got to make a fuck load. Uh, at the, I mean, it ha billion, thankfully oh, it yeah. has. It's a damn good movie, but yeah. you know what I mean. That's a big investment. That's why I I think if you do a Dick Tracy now, you don't spend two hundred million on it. No, no, you, no, no. You, you you could do forty now. You peel, yeah, you yeah, you definitely yeah. do. You peel it back and you do a smaller scale film a little bit. I think you could get away with a Dick Tracy film now for forty because you, you don't get that now. I don't know. It's, it's, the, uh, it's just frustrating. I keep coming back to it. Sin City is one of the rare examples of actors and makeup and otherwise Mickey Rourke's otherwise covered up in effects effects and stuff and you don't see them so much as you see the character they're portraying yeah yeah especially Mickey Rourke he's underneath all that I like Mickey Rourke better with the makeup <laughs> <laughs> especially now the dude's done some work to his face yeah but um, Stallone, I love Stallone, but the eyebrow work that he's had done, dude, 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 just fucking stop. Leave it alone. You look, yes. you looked fine. There was nothing wrong with it. You're allowed to get old. You just, yes, you exactly. can be old. Yes, you can age. It's okay. Yeah. It's, we will suspension of disbelief. Yeah. I know you're like seventy. I will still watch you in an action movie. Yeah, dude, you're still jacked as fuck. So it's like, yeah, if you got some wrinkles above your eyes i'm not gonna care yeah it's ridiculous you know they can de-age you digitally <laughs> very good now yeah now. maybe um, they can digitally fix your fucking eyebrows <laughs> <laughs> maybe good <laughs> that's pretty but that's funny how i at, at the beginning i talked about how like all these guys right are still doing it now but a lot of them have done work very mm -hmm. noticeable work and it's like dude it's okay. <laughs> you can get old. Um, part of the cast I forgot to mention is the kid, uh, Charlie Corsmo. He's good. He's yeah, I like him. And I he's in like nothing. Well, there's a couple. He's films, in Hook. Hook, and can't hardly wait, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really fun kind of American Pie-ish film that I like. Um, and I really liked him in that. I wish he would have. I mean, I'm sure at such a young age. And, and doing all this and making all that money, I, it's, I can only assume, like, wanting to school and wanting to live normal for a different. while. Yeah. How uh, old is he? He's, he's about my age. I think he's 26, 27, maybe a little bit older, maybe 28. I had it pulled up and then I closed it. He might be 30. But I think, wasn't there something in uh, that he's done in, like, 2018? I don't know, because I just have Dick Tracy pulled up, and I pulled it up, and it's 1945. Yeah, that's not the one. Here we go. About. How about 1990? But that can't, can't Hardly Wait film was, was a lot of fun. It's got, like, Breck and Meyer and uh, Seth Green in it. Uh, let's see. What has he got? Eight movies as an actor. Change for Life in 2018. Yeah. This is his most recent one, and then it's... The big, big old gap. Can't hardly wait in 1998. That's crazy. 20 years. Hook in 91. The Doctor in 91. What About Bob in 91. <laughs> Dick Tracy. And then a TV movie. Yeah. That's crazy. That's cool, though. In 2018, I wonder if he's going to kind of come back and do gonna some stuff. going to make a stuff. resurgence? Yeah. He was born in 1978. So. What? Oh, man. He's way older than me. 1978. That can't be right. That IM, IMDB is lying on that one. There's no way he's 41. If he was born in 78, that means he was like 12 in this. IMDB says that he was born in 1978. Well, he would have been 12 in this. Do you think he's 12 in this? I don't know, dude. That's weird. I don't believe that. He can't. Maybe he was a young, slow blossom. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. That's crazy. But um, enough about that. <laughs> That's weird. Um, see, what what do, see what Wikipedia says. 
<laughs> really worked up about this. 1978. Fucker was 40 years old. That's crazy. I thought he was more my age. Huh. Occupation law professor. <laughs> what? Really? After, yeah. After doing all this acting work, he went to law school, huh? Yeah. And now he's back in a film and He went to fucking Yale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Post acting career and a degree in physics from Massachusetts. You went to MIT? MIT in 2000. Fucking Tony Stark over here. No shit. What's he been doing since 98? Building an Iron Man suit in his like, basement. Dude went to MIT and he has a law degree? <laughs> Holy the, shit. The kid from Dick Tracy. Wow, that that kind of blows my mind. Yeah. Holy shit. We downplayed him a little bit. Yeah. Holy ah, you God. know, we probably wanted to live a normal life. Go to MIT. <laughs> I normal Go to life. MIT, and build yeah, an Iron no. Man costume. Damn, Maybe. that's crazy. A kid and Dick Tracy is a genius. Smarter than I am. Holy shit. Um, uh, what were we talking about? Yeah, I don't even know I, what we were I can't, talking I can't about. Even get back there. Um, so, w were there any other scenes that stuck out that you wanted to talk about? We kind of mentioned some of them. Oh, I mean, just funny bits. I like the part where they were escaping from wherever they were, and it was like the underground, uh, like like rail car thing. Oh, okay. uh, right. I don't know. Al like Pacino. Al Pacino, and he's making stupid jokes. I tell he does not shut up the entire. Film. No, he's always got something to say. I think it was a lot of improv. Oh, I'm him. sure. Yeah, they're like just talking shit. Yeah, just Al go. Al Pacino, just don't stop talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> dog walks into a bar. <laughs> um. There was a lot of cool shots. Something that I want to talk about is the suit. Because I think trying to make... Uh, it happens all the time now in superhero films. The you, fine line between cheesy and pulling it off. And they yes. pulled it off. Um, taking something from comics and making it look good on screen. They completely pulled off the yellow suit. Which, mm -hmm. even in the comics, it's like, that's kind of silly. Yeah. But on screen, especially, I think Warren Beatty really pulls it off. It just looks really cool. I, and it's, it's really... Uh, stands out i think we finally learned that just trust the source material and just yes there's like, nothing wrong with these suits. characters look stupid but cool mm -hmm. and there's so a reason they look like that just go with it remember what in the x-men movie they had to put them all in black leather and yeah. then hugh jackman and was, oh what would you rather wear yellow spandex yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes sense. actually i want to see the wolverine <laughs> costume yeah that's why you're cool. And then we got that little teaser in the Wolverine at the but, end. Yeah. You never saw it. Nope. Pisses me off. Sucks that we never got to see you, Jackman, in full on Wolverine. But you just do know. it. Like, just put Dick Tracy in the yellow coat and the yellow like, hat. All of these. The and you three, can make it. The three actors that we named John Hamm, Clive Owen, Army Hammer. Mm -hmm. I think they could all pull off the yellow suit. I think so too. I think they, they fucking look cool in it, I bet. Mm -hmm. Um, and that brings me back to that fucking Power Rangers movie again when they yeah. finally did put on the suits it was all CG there's nothing wrong with suits yeah uh, nothing <laughs> it's just Aquaman they put Aquaman in the in the gold in a, a version of it I mean it was a little more armor looking yeah but which is cool you make, you make it Bad fit ass. you make it fit you make it work you can do it the green and gold Aquaman costume looks good looks good looks super cool yeah, is it, there's nothing wrong with a suit. There's nothing wrong with matte board paintings. There's Look at the source material. It looks good. Too many times they try to get too far away from the source material. Yeah, very much so. There was another shot of uh, kind of what you were talking about earlier with uh, Dick Tracy and the Tommy gun. That's of... just neat when he's just firing. <laughs> And how his trench coat, his suit jacket kind of flutters back in the wind and That's stuff. Good. Like, it's it, good. It it's looks good stuff. awesome. Yeah, it really does. And, I, and I'm just, I, I think I talked about it before, like when we did Gangster Squad, I'm just a sucker for like 1930s, 40s. It's a fun, film. it's a fun time period to revisit on film. I love it. Um, there's another, like a gangster film that I love to talk about. You mentioned Johnny Depp earlier. It has Johnny Depp. Have you ever seen Public Enemies? 
Yeah, I have seen Public Enemies. With, uh, we're about John Dillinger mm-hmm. and stuff. That's mm-hmm. a fantastic I just watched film. that one a couple months ago. Really? Uh, yeah, again. That Yeah, I, I love that <clears> film. That'd be a fun one to talk about. Um, that one's got a really bad Blu-ray transfer. Oh, really? Yeah. I have, you know, it on, I have it on DVD because I'm a peasant. Yeah, uh, and that one's bad. that one. That one, like the the master for it, got fucked up. It makes it hard to watch. It's like fuzzy. Should have bought a DVD. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh, yeah. what they spend on Venom? That seems like an appropriate budget. Okay, Venom was probably I'll, I'll say sixty five. Hundred million for oh okay. A hundred million Sony spent on Venom. Hmm. Movies just cost a lot of money to make. Well, I mean, you have a lot of CG. A lot of that. CG in that one yeah. too. So I think something like Gangster Squad would be. Uh huh. So I, can you check that real fast? <laughs> sure. <laughs> while you're while you're this doing is just, hey, if no one else, can, you can stop. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. interesting so to Jeff just, and I. <laughs> yeah, just uh, kind of getting an idea. So Gangster Squad is like the 30s, 40s, uh-huh. kind of the level of actor we want with Josh Brolin, kind okay. of John Hamish, Clive Owen-y. So probably the actor budget would be similar. I mean, now Josh Brolin probably. It had a 59 point. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. That's what it grossed in oh, other territories. That's sad. Um, it had a budget of 60 million. Okay. Yeah, I, get, I think that's more there in was line. A, there was a bomb at the box office. It made forty-six million. Oh, in that's North, why we talked about forty-six it. million in North America and fifty-nine million in other territories. Hey, so, at least it made back its one hundred and five point two by the time yeah. it was all said and done in a sixty million dollar budget. Yeah. So forty million it, bucks. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> right, make another movie with that. We'd have a hell of a studio. I think you could make in twenty nineteen. Dick Tracy film for sixty million. Sixty. I bet you could make a hundred. I think just under twenty. You you put the Dick Tracy name on the marquee. You do a cool, you know. And that stuff the, like the teaser posters come out with the bullets that say Dick Tracy oh, on that, it, and just like the outline and, of and the just the suit. outline of him. Yeah, you get a good director, a Shane Black or something that's attached to it, and a name, a Clive Owen or something. I, yeah, you know, I'm. You, you we can, might have to write some letters. Yeah. I'm kind of like getting my hopes up now. Me too. I kind of really want this. That would be. I think that would be a lot of fun. Dick Tracy, 2019. If let's you, let's do it. If you do a good cast like what they have, where you got all the teaser posters with like another actor on it, like just one poster with Lady Gaga. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm I, for it now. I think the movie sells itself. So who would be a good bad guy since we're just oh, talking I, out our ass? I, mean, I have no idea. Uh, William Defoe. There you go. I I, don't, I, don't I, I have no idea. Even, uh, I mean, somebody who's going to put on a lot of prosthetics even. It could be, it could be one of the actors like Tom you, Hardy. Freddy or a Jason. Tom Hardy would be a good choice yeah. for a bad guy. I don't know. I know he's the bad now guy. Now we're getting too far. Everything we're spending yeah. sixty million on yeah. actors so, at this point. But. I mean, if our star is somebody like Clive Owen or John Hamm, Eric Balfour. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't know. So, that's Frank Grillo. There you go. There you go. We just made a nineteen. 19- 2019 Dick Tracy film. Yep. Um, well, you gotta have time to film it, so 2020. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> like, if we start now on this shit, like right now, it's 2020. Um, and one last thing, one last kind of piece of trivia is uh, there are a lot of similarities between Batman and Dick Tracy. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of the, the, the quiet guy who's trying to find love. Michael Keaton's chasing after Vicky Vale. Dick Tracy's chasing after Tess. Mm-hmm. Uh, work gets in the way. They each have like the cool shots. The yeah. the bad guy in the heavy makeup that ends up kidnapping her. Mm-hmm. He takes her. I mean, Batman he takes her to the tower. He takes her down the fucking mine shaft and shit. Both of them die <laughs> by falling. Oh, good. Joker falls off the tower. He falls down the chute. Good catch. And uh, the reason. It's just a coincidence is Dick Tracy actually finished filming before Batman did. No shit. Yeah. So Dick Tracy at, did it first. It just got released later. Wow. 
And that's yeah, cool. That's a that was a cool little piece of trivia I was reading. It's amazing that for as big as this movie was, and this seems like this was a really big movie when it came out at the time. What an Oscar! Yeah, no one talks about it anymore. No, that's no, no, weird no. to think about. Well, I like your your comparison when you talk about 1985. Who remembers what won an Oscar in 85? Yeah, you don't. Everybody remembers Back to the Future. Uh huh. I, I think it kind of comes. I mean, there's. I think it was, was Amadeus won for Best Picture. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I think I read that. Uh, but come on, it's, it's Back to the Future is a movie that people remember. And I'm sure around 89, 90, 90 was still being overshadowed by Batman. What else was going on in 90? Um, well, stuff like Misery. <laughs> I don't. I I can't think of anything. But I think 1990 was still being overshadowed by Batman 89 for sure. Batman 89 came out that summer, and seven months later, you don't think people were still talking about Batman? Okay, here you go. Home Alone, Pulp Fiction, Goodfellas, Pretty Woman. Jesus Christ, that's why. <laughs> Kindergarten Cop. Oh. But Goodfellas, Home Alone. This can't be right. Hmm. 1990? This whole fight club was not. No, that was 99. Yeah. Yeah, Misery, Pretty Woman, Good Pretty Fellas, Woman, Pulp Fiction. Goodfellas, Pulp Fiction, those were, I don't know why, uh, I don't know why, that threw me off when Fight Club was in the middle of that. Yeah, that's weird. That was 99. Kindergarten Cop was 90. We've, we've done our fair share of 90s movies, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> So, well, Ninja I, Turtles movie, the live action one was 90. I thought it was 89. Was it 90? That was 90. Oh, huh. I like that one. Um, you have any, uh, any last thoughts, anything you want to say uh, about Dick Tracy before we get out of here? I really think I'm done this time. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think we've expelled all the Dick Tracy chat. Yeah. I, it was some good conversation. It was a good vibe. This was a fun I, podcast. This was a good one. I really like this one. Um, and I can't wait to add the images. I, I think I got quite good. You got some good, good images. Some of stuff. the good colorful yeah. backgrounds and shit. Yeah, I, a lot of backgrounds. Yeah. Because every time a background came out, it was like, capture screen! Green shot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it had been a while for me since I watched this, so I definitely recommend giving it a watch. Uh, it's beautiful. Warren Beatty, Madonna, fantastic. Great cast. It's, uh, it's a fantastic film. Definitely give it a watch. And uh, if you're like us, you know, dream up that remake. Yeah. Think of who you want in it, and uh, it could be a lot of a lot of fun. If if a Dick Tracy film in 1990 made 162 million, <laughs> I think one in 2019 could make 120 on a 40 or 60 million dollar budget. Damn, so, there was a lot of good. I found a big master list of movies that came out in 1990. So we'll see you guys next show. week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you guys for watching. Of course, check out the website, PantheonNetwork.com. Um, I, today I just had a guy on there talking to me, telling me he was watching our reviews. Yeah, that's stuff, awesome. So, cool. Thank you. Uh, we like that. Keep checking out the we site. We like that people listen. Yeah. Uh, PantheonNetwork.com. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Shut Up I Like This. Um, go get yourself a mug. Get yourself a t-shirt. I'm actually I'm wearing uh, one of my Indie Gamer ones. Both my uh, shut up. I like this one's a dirty. I always try to wear something yeah. that uh, pertains to what we're doing. So go get yourself a t-shirt. Check out old audio episodes that are on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to us. It helps us out. And we will see you next week. This has been Shut Up I Like This from the Pantheon Network Studio. And have a good one. <laughs>